Hey friends, welcome back to another Blueprint Nursing NCLEX review. My name is Nicole, and today we're going to talk about dementia. Dementia affects roughly 55 million people and is a condition that you will likely see as a real deal nurse. Let's get started. Dementia is an umbrella term for conditions that are characterized by progressive decline in cognitive function. The pathophysiology of dementia varies depending on the type, but the common thread is that the client's brain cells have sustained damage. What do we see after brain cell damage occurs? Well, we will see a gradual loss of memory, language, problem solving, and other cognitive abilities. Conditions that fall under the dementia umbrella include Alzheimer disease, Lewy body disease, vascular dementia, and frontotemporal dementia. The key thing to remember about dementia is that it is progressive and not a normal process of aging. So who's at risk for developing dementia? Well, we're looking at an age greater than 65 years old, smoking, excessive alcohol consumption, stroke, traumatic brain injury, or a family history of dementia. Essentially, the client has a history or a current condition that has or will cause damage to their brain cells. Let's move on to signs and symptoms. The signs and symptoms of dementia can vary depending on the underlying cause and the severity. Common symptoms include aphasia, which is a decline in language function. A client may have trouble searching for a word or lean on filler words like that or it when communicating. Apraxia, which is an impairment of motor function. This can be seen as less control over voluntary or goal-oriented movements. Agnosia, which is the inability to recognize or name objects despite intact sensory abilities. For example, a client may not recognize a flower by sight or smell despite being able to see or smell it. These symptoms can cause a lot of frustration for both clients and caregivers. Memory loss. This starts as short-term memory loss or forgetting new or recently learned information. Maybe the client forgets that they started cooking dinner on the stove and forgets that they have a pot on the burner. Memory loss eventually progresses to remote memory. Think of remote memories as ones clients have had for a long time. A client may forget the name of their adult children or partner, for example. Let's remember, dementia is progressive. The symptoms may not be obvious at first. A client with mild dementia may just seem forgetful. Not too many red flags, so the difference may not be noticeable. Clients in the early stage may also attempt to hide or deny problems. A client with moderate dementia may seem confused or have difficulties with problem solving. At this stage, they may even seem a little withdrawn. This can be an attempt to hide their cognitive changes. A client with severe dementia will show changes in mood and personality. The client can overreact in various situations, becoming agitated or even aggressive. At this point, the clients typically show an inability to care for themselves and will become totally dependent for care. Knowledge check. Delirium and dementia present similarly. What are two differences that distinguish them from each other? Pause here and come back when you're ready. All right, let's discuss the differences. While delirium has a fast or acute onset and affects consciousness, dementia is a slow progression and does not affect consciousness. Great work. Let's move on to management of dementia. There is no cure for dementia at this time. However, treatment options are available to help treat underlying conditions or to help manage symptoms and improve quality of life. Examples of medications that are used to treat symptoms of dementia include cholinesterase inhibitors like denepazil. These work by slowing the breakdown of acetylcholine in the brain, which improves communication between the nerve cells. NMDA receptor agonists, like memantine, make it easier for neurotransmitters to reach receptors in the brain. Aducanumab, which is in the monoclonal antibody drug class, is thought to remove plaques in the brain. These drugs can improve symptoms or even temporarily slow down disease progression, but they do not halt the progression of dementia or cure it. All right. On to nursing interventions. Nursing interventions for clients with dementia will focus on safety and psychosocial care. These clients need consistent and individualized care from us as their nurse. Measures to implement include reorienting the client as needed. Clients with dementia forget where they are or what is happening and become fearful from not knowing. This would increase their anxiety and the client may act out aggressively. Providing memory aids. What do you think would be helpful here? I'm thinking of having a visible digital clock, Maybe a calendar or familiar object in the room too. Comment on what you would include here. Using simple and direct questions. 
Giving too many options may feel overwhelming to the client. We can try using yes or no questions or provide two options to choose from when asking the clients. Assessing pain using nonverbal scales. Pain assessment in advanced dementia or the pain aid scale is designed for clients diagnosed with dementia. Assisting the client through periods of dysregulation or big emotions can be difficult. When caring for a client diagnosed with dementia, you may want to try validation therapy or collaboration. What do those look like? Validation therapy is a communication technique that emphasizes empathy and understanding by acknowledging and validating the feelings of individuals with dementia rather than challenging their perceptions or memories. So if a client is distressed about missing their parents, we wouldn't want to challenge their reality at that moment. We could reminisce about their parents with them or restate their feelings back to them to show that they were heard. Collaborate with the client. We work with the client to navigate their reality while presenting our own reality. For example, if a client states that they think items were stolen from their room, invite them to look in their room with you to see what's there. Again, safety is key. Implement safety measures based on the client's symptoms and work with them to encourage independence when appropriate. Speaking of safety, let's talk about safety concerns for clients with dementia. Dementia is a complicated disease with many concerns for safety. These clients have cognitive changes that may cause them to underestimate the risk of an activity. Safety concerns for clients with dementia include risk for fall. What is a common sign of dementia? Forgetfulness or confusion. The client may forget that they just had an immobilizing procedure or overestimate their own ability and forget that they cannot ambulate without assistance. They may also experience apraxia. Remember what that is? Yes, impairment of motor function. Risk for disrupted sleep. Their sleep cycle is disrupted due to external stimuli or impaired brain function. Encourage the client to participate in physical activities during the daytime as tolerated. It is helpful to avoid excessive daytime sleep as well as to maintain a healthy sleep cycle. Risk for dehydration or inadequate nutrition. The client is forgetful with mild dementia and confused with moderate to severe dementia, so they are likely to skip meals or forget to hydrate. What can we do for this client? We could assess their intake and output, prepare desirable dishes, and keep their water close by. Risk for elopement. Oh look, we have another knowledge check. Let's check it out. Elopement risk. Why do clients with dementia wander? Pause here and come back when you're ready to discuss. So this client may wander, but why? Well, wandering or the occurrence of other unsafe behaviors may be an expression of an unmet need. Clients with dementia aren't always able to say what they need. You'll want to use your assessment skills to determine why this client is wandering. The client could be wandering because they are hungry, in pain, or need to use the toilet. It's important to regularly meet their needs to help prevent unsafe behaviors. All right, let's do another safety knowledge check. General safety. What safety measures should be included in this client's plan of care? Pause here and come back to me when you're ready. So what is on your plan of care for a client with dementia? I'm thinking of placing this client close to the nurse's station or having a sitter remaining with them for safety. Maybe a bed alarm for a client with a fall risk. I will definitely be performing frequent needs assessments and using the five P's. Do you know what the five P's are? Pause here and see if you can name any. All right, you ready to hear the five P's? They are potty, pain, positioning, possessions, and personal needs. Great job. You handled the safety question gauntlet like a real deal nurse. Let's talk about client education now. So how can we set our clients up to be safe? How can we empower their family to make informed decisions? Dementia is a complex and progressive disease. So providing individualized education to the client and their family is key. Here are some topics that we as nurses can include for our client and family. Safety hazards within the home. We'll want to assess the client's home environment for safety hazards. Can you think of any potential hazards? I'm thinking of cords, throw rugs, pets, stoves. Comment below what you would look out for. We'd also want to talk to them about lighting within the home. Adequate lighting in the home reduces the client's risk for falls. Let's also group motor vehicle use into hazards at home. Although the conversation may be difficult, driving is a risky activity for the client with dementia. The client and their family should discuss transportation plans to ensure the client's safety. Discussing the use of emergency alert bracelets with the client may be beneficial because the clients with dementia are at risk for wandering from home. Promoting independence with activities. 
The client may feel independent enough to complete risky tasks. Unfortunately, this is where their inability to recognize risk comes into play. Teach the family to collaborate with the client to allow for some independence with supervision. Let's use a scenario from earlier. A client wants to cook dinner on the stove. The client is capable of cooking, but they experience symptoms of memory loss. Their family or support system can offer to keep them company while they cook. So the family works with the client to spend time with them while providing supervision with a risky activity. Consistency and care. Our client with dementia will benefit from minimal changes in their day-to-day care. Avoid changes in their daily environment as much as possible to allow for continuity in their life. This could look like having meals at the same time each day or assigning the same nurses to care for the client during their hospital stay. Medical decision making. The client and family should discuss who would make the client's decisions as the disease progresses. An advanced care directive or a power of attorney are both documents that are used in medical decision planning. Respite care. As the disease progresses, the client will likely need total care. Providing a high level of care to a family member can be overwhelming and exhausting. Remember the client with dementia may have disrupted sleep and require continuous care during the day and night. Give the client's family permission to take time for themselves. Caregiver burnout is real, and we definitely want to make sure our client's support system supports themselves. Let's do a quick question before we finish up our dementia review. The nurse is caring for a client diagnosed with dementia who frequently becomes agitated and elopes. Which nursing interventions would be most appropriate in managing this client's agitation? Option one, engage the client in calming activities. Option two, place the client on a bed alarm. Option three, reduce client interactions to avoid negative stimuli. Option four, request a sedative medication from the provider. Okay, pause here and come back to me when you're ready. Ready for the answer? If you said, engage the client in calming activities, you got it. This client is likely confused. Being in the hospital setting as a client is strange as it is, so being diagnosed with dementia, which causes confusion, and out of your normal environment can be pretty unsettling. Diversional activities provide distraction and are a less invasive measure than sedative administration. Using a bed alarm is appropriate, but it only addresses a client's elopement risk. Reducing interactions with a client would be inappropriate because we would want to frequently round on or assess our dementia clients who are safety risks. Great job, friends. That wraps up our conversation about dementia. Thank you so much for coming to review this topic with me. Remember to subscribe to our channel so you never miss a blueprint nursing video. Also, check out our self-paced crash course and live study group options. See you next time.